More than 40% of the world, 3 billion people, generate the heat they need to prepare meals by burning solid fuels like wood, charcoal, and plant and animal waste. The resulting air pollution causes 4 million premature deaths every year, making the simple task of cooking the fourth highest leading cause of death on the planet. These same emissions taking the lives of Earth's citizens are also responsible for more than 20% of climate forcing in our atmosphere, impacting billions of lives globally. Aside from health concerns, this problem also reduces quality of life for women and children in the home. Rather than going to school or working a paying job, women and children must travel to collect fuel, sometimes risking their safety to do so. The so-called global cooking problem has received increased attention in the last five years, and many are now building and distributing reduced emissions combustion stoves. While such stoves are an improvement over the current system, they still trap women and children in fuel-collecting lives and still emit dangerously high levels of pollutants. Why stop there? Why build an incremental improvement when you could engineer a radically new solution? At the Institute for Sustainability, Energy, and Environment at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, we are passionate about finding solutions to the global cooking problem that liberate people and the planet from harmful emissions. The Earth receives more solar energy every hour than all of civilization uses in an entire year. It makes sense to harness it for one of the most energy-intensive tasks in our homes, cooking. Solar cooking is not new. Box cookers, panel cookers, and trough and dish concentrating cookers have existed for many years. Why haven't they caught on? The fact is they simply can't compete with the speed and effectiveness of fire cooking. They don't get hot enough. They require you to cook in an unfamiliar tube, box, or closed pot, and they nearly always demand being out in the midday sun. At best, these current solar solutions are insensitive to the user. At worst, they are blatantly disrespectful to the people they are trying to help and their cooking cultures. Our approach differs because we began our design process studying the services needed by today's fire cookers. They aren't interested in learning a new way to cook. They need a clean technology that allows them to cook as they always have over a high intensity heat source. High levels of solar radiation are found in many areas of the world where the energy impoverished live. To put this power to good use, we are working to overcome the barriers inherent in the way solar energy arrives widely distributed over space and time. The challenge is to collect and concentrate energy, store it, and recover it for use at the times and places it is needed. Here's our solution to this challenge. An insulated metal vessel containing a solid phase change material is placed in the focal point of a reflective dish. After just two hours in the sun, the material melts, concentrating the sun's energy at such a high temperature it can mimic the feel of fire. Our device is different than any other because it maintains local cooking culture for nearly every method of cooking because it is a transportable, scalable device that replaces the fire, not the style of cooking. We've made great strides since the conception of this project. To better understand the cooking problem, we interviewed more than 150 potential users and participants during two six-week startup programs, in virtual interviews with Congolese refugees, and on-site in southern India. The size of our team has nearly doubled over the three-year span of our efforts as new faculty and students lend their expertise to solve the global cooking problem. We are a diverse group comprised of researchers from several colleges in six distinct disciplines and ranging from high school students to tenured faculty and business professionals. We have conducted proof of concept testing in the lab for storage and cooking and in field for energy collection. And we have constructed a series of prototype devices to test performance and usability. Throughout the process, we have discovered several ways to fail, and from those failures, pivoted in our understanding of what is needed and how that might be achieved.
We currently have a low-cost, portable device that allows for collection, storage, and recovery of solar thermal energy. Our next key step is extensive, long-term international field testing. By bringing the next generation of our innovation to users, we can actively involve them in the design process, making the device better and ensuring a more secure future for adoption of the technology. Female entrepreneurship plays a strong role in our envisioned franchise model for our solution to the global cooking problem. Women may operate solar energy harvesting farms made up of several vessels and charging dishes. Once charged, our entrepreneurs put a lid on their buckets of fire and deliver them to customers for an affordable fee. In addition to providing recoverable energy for cooking when and where it is needed, the buckets can be used for space heating, drying, and with the addition of thermoelectric generators, provide lighting and phone charging. Further, we expect the storage vessels will eventually be produced regionally with commonly available low-cost materials using local labor. At the end of their useful life, the materials can be recycled and reused to construct replacement vessels. We believe that our product's simplicity, effectiveness, and ability to fit into current cooking cultures make it a disruptive solution to the global cooking problem. With your support, we can save lives, create jobs, protect the environment, and cook cleaner. <laughs>